Hello Makers. This video is brought to you by the La Quinta Creation Station at the La Quinta Public Library. Follow us on social media. For this video we're going to be making a sensor system for the washing machine. William with you today. To follow along at home, you will need two ESP8266s, one MPU6050, a washing machine, two cents, a nice USB cable to make sure that we program our ESPs well, one capacitor, and one resistor. WS2812 RGB LEDs. You'll need a computer to program your microcontrollers. some jumper wire to connect everything. Sometimes it can be tough to share a washer and dryer between roommates. Often, the distractions of life will force the memory of a pile of waiting clothes out of one's head. This often means the clothes must be rewashed. But what if there was another way? A gentle reminder, perhaps? Or an overbearing klaxon alarm? That might be very helpful. Let's explore this possibility. There are many possible solutions to this issue. Some are very simple, like an egg timer that is used every time the laundry is put in. This is a pretty good solution, as it is cheap and easy, but it may be less fun than an over-engineered solution using electronic sensors and microcontrollers. Let's break our solution into two parts, a system for detecting the washing machine state and a system for notifying us of its state. A few methods we could use for detecting the washing machine's current running state. We could detect the flow of electricity passing through the power cables of the machines, we could use a microphone to listen for rumbling, or even listen for the laundry finished buzzer, which normally we can't hear inside the house. We could use a piezo sensor, or an accelerometer, to detect movement or jostling of the machines as they run. Or maybe a more advanced technique might be using a camera and computer vision to see if they're running. We're going to use an accelerometer. Just as with the detection, there are many possible notifying methods. We could send a text message create an alert on an app or a notification. We could send an email, or we could have it blare a noise through some speakers. There are many options. We are going to change the color of some LED lights to indicate what state the washing machine is in. For this project, we'll be working with the motion sensor known as the MPU6050. The MPU6050 is itself a bit of over-engineering for our solution. It has an accelerometer, a gyroscope, a thermometer, and a digital signal processor that can convert the combined readings from the sensors into another meaningful description of motion known as a quaternion. For our project, however, we will be throwing away all the data that is not accelerometer readings. We'll also be using two ESP8266s. The ESP8266 is a popular, if somewhat aging, vessel for commercial and hobbyist Internet of Things projects. It is a small microcontroller with the ability to communicate over the 802.11 standard, also known as Wi-Fi. These particular development boards can be broadly thought of as being slightly faster Wi-Fi enabled Arduino Unos. To notify our users, we'll be using WS2812 LEDs in a strip. We'll connect 10 of them to one of our ESP8266s and light them up in different colors to indicate the washing machine's state. It can be handy with any sort of project to outline your desired outcomes. We've outlined this project with a flowchart. 
On the left we see a series of bubbles describing some states our microcontroller might infer about our washing machine from the data presented by the accelerometer. And on the right we'll see what we want the LEDs to show in those conditions. In general, when the washing machine is fully off, the LEDs should be green or off. When we're moving but not absolutely sure we're washing something, the LEDs should be yellow. And when we're pretty sure the washing machine is operating, the LEDs should be red. In order to reduce the personal complexity of this project, we'll be controlling the LEDs with a popular ESP8266 software set called WLED. WLED is a set of software that allows for the easy and effective control of some popular RGB or RGBW LED chipsets, such as the World Semi 2812 RGBs we'll be using. WLED's colors can be directed over Wi-Fi with several different communication protocols and methodologies. It also works with Google Assistant or Alexa for voice-operated LEDs. We'll be using HTTP commands to control our LEDs today. Here we can see the project in a test rig. We have a tiny little washing machine with a cell phone buzzer to simulate washing action. On the front of the washing machine we can see the MPU6050, our accelerometer. It is happily sensing its surroundings constantly, whether we are asking for the data or not. The MPU6050 is connected to one of our ESP8266 microcontrollers, which is running our code. Here we see our simple notification system. We've got our tiny strip of WS2812 RGB LEDs. They are connected to a breadboard strip. Best practices for the use of these WS2812 LEDs asks that we add a capacitor bridging between positive and negative sides of the power rail, and a resistor between the ESP8266 and the first LED in the strip. Remember to double and triple check the polarity of your capacitor before adding power. Let's see this test rig in action. We'll switch the buzzer on, and that should cause our LEDs to gradually change from green to red. And we'll switch the buzzer off and watch the lights go back to green. It works, but how does it work? To explore that, we have another flowchart. This one is more related to the flow of our actual program, and is a bit more complicated. As designers, we have to decide which conditions we will use within our code to decide when the machine is operating or not. This flowchart highlights those conditions. We'll start in the top left. The microcontroller can enter an extremely low power consumption mode we'll call deep sleep. Every few minutes, the microcontroller will wake up. The first thing it will do when it wakes up is turn on the accelerometer, and then start to take readings. The readings will be processed by our code and compared against a value we as designers have chosen. If we have enough measurements larger than this value in a given sampling period, we can consider the machine to be moving. If we have a machine we consider to be moving, we'll wait one minute and test the conditions again. If it passes this second movement test, we'll change the LEDs to yellow and repeat the tests one final time. Another set of conditions passed, and we'll consider the laundry to be operating, and we'll change the notification color to red. Once we consider the washing machine to be running, we'll let the ESP8266 stay awake and check the washing machine every couple minutes. We have a similar process as before for deciding the washing machine is no longer running, except a little backwards. If that second check shows the machine might be off, we'll enter an extended delay and test again. We delay the second check because washing machines often have a longish soaking cycle, where a second check done more quickly might show a false positive for the machine being finished. If the second slowdown check comes up with the results indicating low movement, we'll switch our notification to yellow and we'll test the situation one final time. If we get low movement again, we'll switch the color of the LED to green and send the ESP to sleep for 10 minutes. When it is in deep sleep, it resets the program state to the beginning of the code, and so we're back where we started.
the accelerometer is here, constantly reading information. We'll store its information into variables, or data buckets, for use in our program. We'll store its information twice, each separated by a little time, so that we can get a difference in movement between these two moments. Next, we take our data buckets and subtract them from each other so that we can get the difference between them. Then we'll add those differences together to generate a new value, which represents a gross change in accelerometer readings. We'll take this new calculation and put it into an array. An array can be thought of as a bucket holder for buckets of data. Once all of the positions in our array are filled, we will sum the whole array together and divide by 10. This will get us one number, which represents the average change in accelerometer readings for the past 20 seconds or so. The next part of our program looks at this average number and compares it to a value we'll call the sensitivity value. If our average is above this value, our program will send a true to the next step. If it is below this value, it will send a false to the next step. Sensitivity value is a parameter which will have to be fiddled with and tuned to the specific washing machine to be used. Next, we have another array. This one will hold the trues and falses passed on by the last step. Once this array is filled, we'll sum all the variables together. When we sum the numbers together, we get a number which represents the percentage of recent time that the washing machine has been considered moving. In computer language, true is equal to 1 and false is equal to 0. We'll pass this number to the next step. This step runs at the end of our program loop and performs the tasks which we would notice here in the outside world. Our value from the last stage will come in and another pass-fail test is performed. For our example, this test will always pass, but if it failed, we reset the whole program from here. When it passes, the program looks at a counter value named is moving. This value helps keep our place in the program. In the first round of our example, our washing machine's movement has carried us to this part of the program, so we'll add 1 to is moving and restart the program. When we arrive again, our is moving is 1, so the program goes down a different path. In this path, we set our notification LEDs to yellow and add 1 to is moving again before restarting. Finally, when we get to this point in the program again and is moving is 2, we'll set the notification lights to red, indicating that the laundry is in use. We'll reset is moving for later use, and we'll set another counter named is laundry to 1. Then we'll restart the program. We use is laundry in a similar way as we did is moving. When our program arrives at this stage again, it will check for is laundry. And if it is set to 1, the program essentially works the same as in our example, but in reverse. It checks to see if the sum of trues and falses from the previous stage is less than 50% true, and if so, steps down bit by bit to the starting state of our program.